Good morning, church. Always, always good to be here. It's the first day of the week, worshiping God, worshiping God with you. And um, I'll just have to share this thing. We're going to talk about this morning about the joy, the joy of the Lord. And I would like to thank Brother Charles for the songs that he chose for this morning, which are all related to the subject that we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to talk about the joy that is in us in Christ. Before anything else, let's go to our Father in prayer. Our Heavenly God, we, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. We can do anything, dear God, without you. Um, doing the things for us and we uh, thank you for this opportunity that you gave your servant to uh, to present your message this morning and we pray that our purpose in our worship and uh, and our devotion this morning will be according to your will and acceptable to your sight and we pray that you give us an understanding heart and mind so that we could ponder on these words that we're about to discuss this morning we love you, dear Lord, and all of these things and all the glory going back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as we go to our lesson this morning, I ask, I would like to invite you to open your Bibles because we would let the Bible speak to us this morning with the things that we're going to talk about. Um, I know that I am under uh, on time, but, you know, it's Sunday, so I'll take that opportunity to get a little bit of your time, but I'll try to do this lesson as, uh, as fast as we can. But you know, if the message is asking for it, then we'll go for it. So thank you again, Brother Charles, for the, for the song. And I didn't realize that the, the that garden song relates to our motive this morning. It's a garden, which is, um, uh, what I've said before, uh, it is, we're talking about the joy, the joy that is in us that uh, uh, through Christ, and oh, what a joy! And uh, and the and the song goes, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other could ever know. That joy that we are gonna about to talk about this morning will uh, uh, as we go on. Okay, um, our text. Again, thank you for Brother Al, uh, Brother Al for reading our text this morning, and I will read it again. John 15, verses 9 to 11. As the Father has loved me, since Jesus said, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things... I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. On some other trans translations, it says your joy may be complete. So, it says, These things that I have spoken to you, Jesus said. In our text, Jesus is giving his disciples an intimate talk. This is an hour, few hours not from now. Uh, he will be arrested and soon will be tried and crucified and die on the cross. So I encourage you to open your Bible and let's start from the very beginning what Jesus is talking about. In these things that I have spoken to you. What does he mean about this? So he's, by, by this word he said he talks about something else before he went into this passage. So let's start on John 14. John 14, chapter 14, verse 1. We will go through the chapter and summarize uh, that what's transpired in this moment. Jesus is giving comfort and encouragement to his disciples, saying, says, Do not let your hearts be troubled, he said. Trust in God and trust also in me. And in verse 6, John 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No, one's, no one goes to the Father except through me. Jesus said in verse 26, same chapter 14, Jesus mentioned that the Holy Spirit, 
that the helper will be sent by God the Father. He said, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all the things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So he's still talking about the things that he told them. So we're just going to uh, go on. And then Jesus said on uh, verse 27, uh, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Uh, do not give, I do not give to you what as the world gives. And do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Again, encouraging his disciples. Because he's giving his disciples a heads up on what is going to happen uh, in their lives that will eventually change them permanently. It is going to be a total, it is going to be total loyalty and obedience to his call unto death, which can only be achieved by abiding in his love and having the joy in of doing so. So, uh, as we go on, he said, he said on, on our text, John 15, verse 9 and 10, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Said So that's the same love that the Father gave me, I also loved you. See, also loved us. Abide in my love, stay, stay in my love. And if you keep my commandments, if, I, if you keep what I, I'm teaching to you, then you will stay in my love. Just as I've stayed in my father's, as I obeyed my father's commandment and stayed in his love. And at this time, maybe the disciples are thinking, what is Jesus is talking about, um, about these things? Why is he talking about these things? I've told you before, he's trying to uh, give them a heads up and he's encouraging them because it will be a grief later on. And, and verse 11, he said, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you. He wants to give us the joy that is in him and that our joy on their joy may be full, may be complete. So that means that means the joy that he talks about is not complete yet until, you know, it is full. Then we will know how it is as we go on. So he knew he was leaving them for a while and then there will be great, great sorrow on his departure. John 16, 22 says, so with you now is your time of grief but i will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy having joy is a deep feeling of satisfaction a profound feeling of thankfulness that you cannot really explain but you experience it it is a deeper definition of happiness just the song goes and the joy we share as we tarry there, no one can ever know. You cannot explain it. Jesus wants us, wants the disciples at that time to have his joy, the same joy that he has to, to be with us to, so that we could have it. So what joy that he's talking about? What joy? Well, Joy is the fruit of the Spirit. We know that on Galatians 5.22. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit, which is the fruit of the Spirit, abiding in God's presence and from hope in His Word. The Bible definition of joy says, Joy is a feeling of good pleasure and happiness that is dependent on who Jesus is. It is dependent it is depending on how well do you know Jesus rather than those rather than who we are or what is happening around us it depends on how we know Jesus well joy is rooted in who God is that's why joy is eternal so what is the difference between joy and happiness Let's see. Joy is in the heart while happiness is in the face. When you're happy, they'll know it. But when you're joyful, even you're not happy, but you have joy inside, you know it too. That's why you cannot explain it, but there's joy in there. Joy is in the soul. Happiness is off of the moment. 
Joy is an inner feeling. Happiness is an outward expression. Happiness is a reaction to something great, while joy is the product of someone great. It is the product of someone great who gave it to us. Next. What is the importance of having joy? What is the importance of having joy? Number one, having joy makes us resilient. Resilient. The Bible dictionary defines resilient as a person that is able to withstand or recover quickly from difficult conditions in life. He is durable, his durability, his toughness, flexibility, and strength in handling life's trials and tribulations. In short, joy helps us bounce back. We can read on 2 Corinthians 4.8, when Paul is trying to defend the gospel and telling them the source of the power that is from God, he said, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. <clears throat> Nehemiah, Nehemiah found joy in the Lord. And it served as his strength, hope, and assurance, knowing that the Lord is with him in his mission to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And with that, he said this, Nehemiah 8.10, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is, the sacred, is sacred to our Lord, and do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. He said to his fellow Israelites, preparing them in building the wall. That is a very challenging task ahead. Next. Having joy makes us resistant. Bible meaning of resistant means steadfastness, to be firm and unwavering, impenetra impenetrable, Penetrable. We are a rock. When we have joy, we are Im impenetrable. If resilience is bouncing back from life's trials and tribulations, temptations, and hardships, being resistant is being immune to them. They are there, temptations, tribulations, and everything, but they won't affect us. It is like a vaccine. Joy is like a vaccine. There you go. We know what vaccine is. And we have a lot lately. So we know how that immunity that's being developed to us. Having that joy makes us resistant to trials, to the tribulations, temptations, and hardships. First Peter 5.10. It says, And the God of all grace who called you for his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. As from Peter, true joy endures all things. Next. Number three, joy makes us healthy. Healthy. Bible dictionary or Bible dictionary defines healthy as fit and in good physical condition a sound state of mind in a moral sense and goodness i like that i like that better so healthy is a sound state of mind in a moral sense of goodness why did i say that because being a, having a sound mind and a moral sense of goodness you can find wisdom with joy we find wisdom let me explain that further. Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear, the reverence of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if we fear the Lord, we are we 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 begin to, to uh, 
have his wisdom we can understand things the way he sees things because we are we are rev we have reverence through him and you he said david said on psalm 16 uh, verse 11 he said you made known to me the path of life you filled me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand so so you you said you made known to me you you showed me you let me think about how to live life you you made me known to be to me the path of life he said so having a sound state of mind is so important that's why joy is there so that we could find wisdom and we know that we could only find wisdom through god to christ so having all said that what are the assurance of joy what are the guarantees of joy in our lives first we have the love of the father the love of the father to us famous verse john 3 16 to 17 for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life for god did not send his son into this world to condemn the world but to save the world through him so we have an assurance of joy and this is an encouragement to us because the father loves us so much that he gave his only son for us for our salvation number two god's word god's word and his promises are true god is faithful and true in everything that he says and does so you can count on the promises of god in the bible to be absolutely trustworthy examples of his great promises John 14, John 15, you can read all his promises there. John 3, 16, that we have just read. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Hebrews 13, 5. I will never leave you or forsake you. Matthew 6, uh, not to worry of life. Isaiah 40, 20, 20, he gives his strength to the weary and, increase the, and increases the power of the weak. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in, in for, where whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have it, and it will be yours. Philippians four thirteen. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. These are the precious promises of God, and and if, if we if we read them, Joshua twenty four forty five, Joshua twenty one forty five. It says, No one. Of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. No one, no, everyone, everyone was fulfilled. I'm sorry. Not one of all God's, not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. That was the word we can find on Joshua 21 45. Second Peter. One and four said, he has given us very great and precious promises which are true and they're all fulfilled. One more. One more gives us joy. Obedience to God's command give us joy because, let us read Psalm 19, 11. Psalm 19, 7 to 11. How come that the that obedience to God's command give us joy? Because, because knowing, knowing that the law of the Lord is perfect, the statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple, the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant giving light to the eyes the fear of the lord is pure enduring forever the ordinance of the lord are sure and altogether righteous they are more precious than gold than much pure gold they are sweeter than honey than honeycomb and by them is your servant warned in keeping them 
there is great reward. Obedience to God's command gives us joy because we know that all the, the commandments of the Lord are good uh, and they're perfect and altogether righteous and everything. We have joy. We have joy and peace because we know that the Lord is taking care of us. We have joy and peace because the Lord is taking care of us. Let's read Psalm 23 real quick. We are studying this on our Wednesday night Bible class with Brother Mike. He says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in fields of green grass. He leads me to quiet pools of fresh water. He gives me new strength. He gives me, he guides me in the right path as he promised. Even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will be I will not be afraid. Lord, for you are with me. Your shepherds rather and stop, they protect me. You prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim. I know that your goodness and love will be with, will be with me all my life and your hearts will be my home as long as I live. That's a very good encouragement. That's a very deep encouragement coming from David himself as he mentioned about the joy and peace that you could get from God if you abide with him. The next part is their personal experiences in life. You can fill in the blanks. You know we have all the joy that, that, that we mentioned here. We experience them. We know them. Example, when we have first our son, for those who are parents here, when our first son was born, our first child was born, we know the feeling of that joy. And that can never be taken away from you. Well, sometimes we're not happy about our children. But the joy is still there. That's what, what God is talking about. Sometimes, you know, it, it happens. But the joy is still there. You still care for them. So, anyway. But that's the joy that taken talking about. Uh, for those who have grandchildren. You know the joy of having grandchildren. You can never, you can't buy that. It's from deep in there. And God is giving us that gift. That's why in my experiences in life, who am I, God, to, to be blessed like this? I am just a simple man and, and, and I don't even fit uh, everywhere because I'm a filthy rag. But God blesses all of this. We have that joy. We have that joy in us. And you know what? Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things to, to Christ who strengthens me. Next. So, knowing all that, going back to the, to the message, to the text this morning, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. We understand that. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just I kept my father's commandments and abide, in his, and abide in his love. We understand that too. We discussed that. These things, he said again here, I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that joy, your joy may be full. So again, I'm coming back to that, to that word. These things I have spoken to you, he said. Jesus is saying here this. Okay, those joys that were explained a while ago, those are just first half of the joy I am talking about. And how to make your joy full and complete is on verse 12. It's on verse 12. He said, These things I have spoken to you that you may have joy in you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. So, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. He said, love one another as I have loved you. That would complete the joy in us. Our joy is not complete, only loving, our our only loving God. He wants us to love our fellow men, our brothers as he loved us. So, we can only achieve the fullness of joy by first loving Jesus and obeying his commandment and also with the same love to our fellow men. 
our fellow man. See, this is a very important thing because he mentioned it again on verse 17. Chapter 16. These things I command you again, he said, that you love one another. Therefore, this is very important. This is very essential. He summarized the two greatest commandments. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And then the other one commandment, love thy neighbor as thyself. Love your neighbor. That joy is complete with the love of God and with the love of our neighbor. One is missing, your joy may not be complete. I'm sorry to tell you that. But God is telling us this is his requirement to make our joy complete. Isn't it joyful knowing all of these things to obey and to keep his commandments, remaining and continuing in his love and having a life full of joy? So rejoice. So rejoice. Philippians 4.4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord. I will say again, rejoice. Therefore, here's the conclusion. Abide in Jesus' love, obey his commandment, plus love one another equals complete joy. Philippians 4, 4, again, rejoice in the Lord, always rejoice. Again, I would say rejoice. So we are now in our invitation, knowing all of this, knowing all of this, the joy coming from the Lord and the love that we have for our brothers, that should be done. Knowing all of this, we have the responsibility to share it with other people who doesn't know it. Share it to those who are lost and seeking. We are so blessed in knowing these things. Just like what Jesus told his disciples, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you to the end of the age. That's another promise. But we have a responsibility to do. For those who are here or on the Zoom platform this morning and feeling weary, tired and troubled, if there's a guilt that is affecting your soundness, your soundness of health, if you have resentment that you carry around, you heard the good news that Jesus is the only source of joy. Cast it all. Cast all your cares upon Jesus and he will give you rest. Be sorry for your mistakes. Repent and be reconciled to God. Open your heart to be more forgiving as you were forgiven. If you are here or on the Zoom platform and still not decided to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior for the remission of your sin, What's keeping you from doing so? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Accept Jesus now and do not delay. We're here to assist you if you decide now. If there are any prayer requests, please let us know so we can all pray together as we stand and sing our song of invitation. And again, thank you for the opportunity this morning. To God be all the glory. Amen.